Kevin. Kevin McCullough. So glad to have you with us uh, back in Times Square. Kevin McCullough, always glad to be waving the, uh, the flag of groups that are doing great work. And in this particular week, we are speaking with Joel Veldkamp and very glad to have Joel back with us. He's been with us frequently this year, uh, highlighting some of the things that uh, Christian Solidarity International is involved in. And uh, Joel, if you were to describe the, enti- the the total scope of CSI, how many countries are you in? How many different projects do you have going on? What's kind of the the big picture of everything CSI does? Yeah, we have ongoing projects in 14 different countries to help persecuted Christians and especially Christian communities that are existentially threatened, where the persecution is so bad that the church itself might go extinct if action isn't taken. Um, So that's everywhere from Central America, North Africa, South Asia, the Middle East, um, and there are dozens of projects that we run, everything from getting people out of slavery uh, to help for refugees uh, to legal aid for Christians who are thrown in jail for their faith. Um, Yeah, and we try to bring this all together uh, in a way that we can speak for persecuted Christians in a a meaningful way in the halls of power, right? So we don't just deliver aid to the Christians who need it, but we also listen to their stories, we learn from their experiences, and we use that information to go and talk to the UN, to the US government, to the EU, uh, to different organizations and governments that might be able to take some action. Uh, So we try to lend a helping hand and we try to be a voice so let's talk about Myanmar. It may be a country that not a lot of people know a lot about, but what is the situation on the ground there? Yeah, Myanmar is on my heart right now because my coworker just got back from there, actually, and she brought some stories. Um, but Myanmar is one of the world's worst dictatorships, one of the world's oldest dictatorships, and also one of the world's oldest civil wars. Um, so there's a military junta that controls the country, and... Uh, They're Buddhist nationalists, we can say. They want to kind of impose a Buddhist identity on the entire country. But there are millions and millions of Christians who live in Myanmar. Um, And when the country became independent in 1948, these Christian groups were promised that they would have some freedom, some autonomy, some power to choose their own future. And the military just took that away from them, which is what triggered the civil war that's gone on for so long. There was a lull in the fighting um, during the 2010s, but in February 2021, there was a new military coup in Myanmar, and the new military government restarted the civil war. And since then, millions of people have had to flee their homes, and the Christian areas of uh, Myanmar have been some of the hardest hit by the bombing. Um, So CSI has a project right now to help uh, children who have fled their homes continue to get education. So the uh, the extent to which um, this situation, like, you know, it's if we didn't have CSI to talk about it, um, the fact that this type of suffering goes on, that this type of inhumanity to inhumanity uh, to humanity goes on, um, we, we, we wouldn't have any real clue about. But at the same time, even though you guys are there, it seems as though much of the world is still relatively uninformed and on some level doesn't care. How can my people um, go about telling the story in a way that, that, that garners more attention? What are some of the things that CSI encourages people to do to raise awareness about these issues? Yeah, I think... Uh... There, there are always stories on our website that people can share if they want to learn more about uh, the Christian experience in Myanmar. We have some videos on our YouTube channel, which you can find from our website. Um, it's, it's a very delicate time in Myanmar. Um, the, the civil war is not going well at all for the military government. Um, and there's a possibility that the military government may collapse in the coming year. And that would be good in one way, but it would also open up a whole bunch of new problems, like who's going to rule afterwards. Um, so I think kind of the good. devil you don't know versus the devil that you do. Exactly. Exactly. Um, so I think it's good if um, Christians in America know about it, know that Myanmar is a place where their brothers and sisters in Christ are persecuted for their faith. It's a place, uh, where the U S government could do a lot more good if it wanted to. Um, 
and I would hope that, yeah, if, if the church becomes engaged on this issue, if people write to their congressmen and their senators saying, hey, this is happening in Myanmar, Christians are being bombed, Christians are being expelled from their villages, Christians are being subjected to sexual violence sometimes, um, to put this issue on the map kind of of American politics would be very, right. very powerful. Uh, it needs to be on the radar screen. And friends, um, you can you can write the letter that Joel just said, or you can also call them. 202-224-3121 is the switchboard to the uh, Capitol. You may notice I memorized that because I encourage people to call their representatives regularly. You just have to ask for your res representative by name when you call that number, 202-224-3121. Joel, how many uh, refugee children is CSI currently helping uh, in Myanmar. What's the scope of it? S several hundred, several hundred. And um, usually they've, they've fled outside of Myanmar to just across the border in a few different countries. Uh, so that's where we go uh, to meet them. Um, and one thing that my coworker told me when she came back this time is that these children, for the most part, they're separated from their families. Their mm -hmm. families have stayed behind tr to try to protect their houses, but they've sent their kids away so they can continue to get an education. You try to be safe. Safety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's it's a very remote part of the world. There's not a lot of electricity. There's not a lot of internet access. So they don't always get news from their parents or news from their families. And sometimes when they go home just to visit, they'll get to their own village and no one is there because the village has been destroyed or everyone has fled mm. or there was some sort of emergency. Um, in one case, we heard that eventually they went, the children went into the forest and then found some of their neighbors. And it turned out the whole village had just been hiding in the forest for weeks uh, for fear of the bombings. Wow. Yeah. That is really, uh, that is just compelling. Uh, Joel Velkamp, uh, Dr. Joel Velkamp, uh, doing a great job with CSI. We appreciate your diligence in bringing us this information. Uh, and friends, again, if you, if you, are moved by this, uh, don't just nod the head and say, wow, that's a good thing to be uh, focusing on. No, don't, don't let us confuse the nodding of the head with the doing of the thing. Let's do the thing. Uh, and that is to speak up and to speak out on behalf of our brothers and sisters. Ready or not, we'll be right back.